All right, Yazi, I'm going to let you go first. All right, cool? all right. All right, cool. So it's pretty simple. This is a scenario. I'm going to build it. Me and Yazi, me and Yazi, we go on a test drive, right? We go on a test drive, okay? 2018 Dodge Ram, 80,000 miles. We go on a test drive in the car. We get back. I told Yazi I wanted to look at the truck. Hit me with the trial clothes. Ask me to buy it. And it looks like you, uh, we, you appreciated everything on the test drive. Looks like the vehicle is exactly what you're looking for. Go ahead on the side, give you a quick five-minute proposal, and that way we can put a deal together for you. Cool. Hey, listen, number one, I totally appreciate you. I really like the truck. But look, I'm going to keep this truck for a couple years. I'm going to trade it back in. I think these miles are just a little bit too high. I think I'm going to look for something with a little less miles on it. Hey, Andy, I get it. I can understand how you're coming off thinking the miles are a little bit too high. But what I hear from you is you're actually going to be trading it in a few years. So the nice thing about the purchasing a vehicle with a few more miles than something else is actually the hardest part of the uh, whole thing is the depreciation process has already been taken into account. So... In a couple of years, with the, once you hit 100,000 miles on this vehicle, you're actually not going to be sitting in a negative equity position like you would with a, a lower mile vehicle. And after about three years, when you decide to trade it in, they're both going to be 100,000 miles. You're not going to be in a negative equity position in this vehicle like you would with the one with less miles. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, watch. All right, here we go. All right. I'm going to serve you with the same thing, okay? Real easy. We go on a test drive, 2018 Dodge Ram, 80,000 miles. We get back. Um, go ahead and hit me the trial clothes. Ask me to buy it. Hey, Andy. Um, assuming that you like the vehicle well enough to own it today, would you be, would you be open to that, going inside and uh, taking a look at some numbers? Yeah, yeah. You know what? You did a good job. I like the truck. It's a nice truck. I really just think the miles are a little bit too high. I'm going to look for something with a little less miles. Okay, I totally understand th that. Um, that vehicle, this vehicle that we test drove is a really great car. We do have an open lot. We have over 100 different vehicles on my lot with lesser miles. You want to take a look at the lot again? Yeah, so let's do this. Let's act like you don't have any more trucks and this is the last truck you have. Is that cool? That's totally understandable. Uh, um, so my company owns seven different dealerships on my whole street. So we can actually take a look at any other dealership on my street and we can go take a look and see what they have. We can bring it to my store and we can sell it to you at my store. Okay, let's act like you don't have one. <laughs> Hold on, no, because listen, I'm gonna explain something to you, all right? Right now, would everybody agree we're in an inventory shortage? Yep. Okay, guys, listen to me. Two years ago, you know, you had 19 other things you could show somebody. Right now, I, look, let me explain this to you. You, you want to become the best salesman in the world? Understand this. Every single vehicle that you have for sale, you need to figure out how to sell that vehicle, okay? If I was in this market right now, I'd have made $2 million on them. You know why? Because I was a used car salesman. I didn't sell new. New was easy to sell. But the cool thing is everything that's new that's coming in is already pretty much pre-sold, okay? Unless your owners did a really good job and have a ton of new car inventory, then you're lucky and you're going to sell all that shit anyways. But it's a used car game this next year. Do you feel me? Okay. Guy comes in, by the way, it could be a guy comes in on a 10,000 mile car, right? And yours has 40. Does that make sense? It could be a guy came in on a brand new car, but you don't have one. So you're showing him one with 15,000 miles. Does that make sense? And the guy's like, I don't want something with miles. You see what I'm saying? Okay. It could be that a guy came in on one with 80,000 miles, but you have one with 120,000 miles. So you show it to him and the customer says, Hey, I don't like the miles. I like the truck. I just don't like the miles. Does that make sense? What's the objection? Miles are too high. Mileage. Understand this, guys. Look, your job when explaining the miles to somebody, everybody write this down. Be a master communicator. All right, now listen. Yazi, you did a good job. But your communication in your words, right, it was a little bit choppy. Does that make sense? If you want to become a master closer, a master closer is a master communicator. It is a person that when they communicate, they communicate very clearly. It is a person that when they're explaining something to you, they slow down at key points to make sure you understand the key point. It is a person that when they're speaking to you, they're looking at you in your eyes, they're using their hands, and they're making sure that at certain words, they slow down, just like the way I'm talking to you right now. Your tonality, your body language, are you a performer? Yes, you are. When you meet somebody, you can walk out and be like, hey, Travis, what's going on? It's Andy, man. Welcome to the store, man. Gosh, man, I'm so glad you guys are here. You're fired up. You can do that. But what about when they say no, right? That's where salesmen get deflated and you start getting caught off track. When they say no, what is your job? To increase the state. Hey man, you know the fact that you feel that way? I totally understand. Completely get it. However, oh, what's going on here? Somebody is familiar with this business. Somebody is the trusted guide. Somebody is the expert. Who is that person? It's you if you sound like it. You know the coolest thing? You guys can be anybody you want to be. Let me explain that to you right now. I don't care who you are. Right now, you can literally be anybody who you want to be. You want to be the best salesman in the world? Start acting like it. What does that person sound like? 
How do they look? How do they speak? You think they speak pretty well? Yeah. You think they throw out a lot of dead words that don't really mean anything? No. They're smooth, like water when they speak. Guys, are you, are you, are you guys motivational speakers? Every one yeah. of you are. Your job is to motivate people to want to spend the money and stay and do the deal. Am I right? Sure. Why are you speaking so monotone? Do you guys think that people want to have fun or be serious when they spend their money? Have fun. Oh, baby. I think they want to have fun, and I think that we actually make it serious. And I think that whenever people tell us no, I think it bothers us and pisses us off. So it triggers you, and therefore, you actually end up getting a little bit frustrated. And when you do, you lost the sell. See, they need somebody that believes and understands that this is the best thing for them to do and will give them reason, ex reasons and excuses why it is. So we're going to start moving a little bit quicker through these objections, but I want you to understand a master communicator, right, Someone makes it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and makes it the customer's idea every single time. Let me explain that to you. This customer came in. They came in on an 80,000-mile Dodge Ram. Am I right? They wanted to see it. They asked you to show it to them. You went and showed it to them. You took them on a test drive. Now that they think the miles are a little bit too high, is that a stall? Maybe. Is it an objection? Sure. Could it be overcome? Absolutely. How will it be overcame? With massive certainty, believability, fun, and a word track. A word track is something you have tattooed on your heart. When somebody says no, you know exactly how to get them to say yes. Everybody write this down. Have an arsenal of word tracks. Arsenal of closes. Arsenal means this, more than one. I'm going to give you one, but I have four, five, ten, even 30 on some certain objections. When I talk about pricing, I have 30 word tracks on pricing. Here's the deal. I'm not getting up. I'm not going to get my manager. I'm going to handle this right here, me and you, okay? Do you guys want to be responsible for your own money, or do you want someone else to be responsible for it? Quit letting someone else be responsible for your money then. You speak for a living. You speak for a living. That's what you do. You guys will understand this. Your managers have never had meetings with you and told you that, look, you guys are public speakers. Be better at speaking. I am here to tell you that if you can become great at speaking and you'll keep your mindset strong, you'll make more money than you know what to do with, more money than you can spend. You won't always be in the car business. You'll grow to do crazy things. But understand, right now is your opportunity to see just really how good you are. Let's handle this word track. Let me grab one of my coaches. Who wants to handle this? I got it right here, baby. All right. This is how you handle this. Hey, I like the car, but the miles are too high. Hey, look, I completely understand how it may seem that way. However, if you were to buy a vehicle with fewer miles, you'd spend more money. I mean, look, if you had our vehicle with 80,000 miles and you found the exact same vehicle with 50,000 miles and you drove those two vehicles for a three-year period, which one would you end up owing more money on when you went to trade it in? The one with fewer miles because you spent more money for it. I mean, look, because our vehicle has a few more miles, the biggest part of the depreciation cycle has already been taken into consideration. So when you look at the bigger picture, you won't be upside down on my vehicle or the other vehicle with less miles. You most likely will be. So at the end of the day, going with a highly rated vehicle like ours with a few more miles is definitely the best decision to save big money right now and down the road when you go to trade it in. Let's go, baby! Woo!